did with the hydrophilic versus hydrophobic signals kind of things the other day. We want to ask the question, well, let's believe this is true because it's in the textbook and we're not going to tell you too many lies, right? Let's just see, does it make sense with the kind of information we know about these signals now so far? So we've got graded potentials versus action potentials. A graded potential, as far as a type of signal, a graded potential is the input, right? It's the first thing that happens. And where do we get it? We get it in the, or the uh, dendrites and the cell body. Okay? That's the input coming in, right? We mentioned that this kind of flows, this kind of information here. It's coming into the cell body. Once you get an action potential, it act, it, we didn't comment on this, but, uh, but we'll put it, it's a regenerating conducting potential. Now, what does that mean? Well, conducting means to just, there's no figuring out, right? Get from point A to point B. Where are we going from? We're going from the hillock. Where are we going to? The axon terminus. Once the hillock decides to send a signal, it should send a strong signal. And that signal is regenerated at every point along the axon. So it's plus 30 millivolts at the hillock, it's plus 30 millivolts at the terminals. That means at every point along the membrane, we reinforce this action. That makes sense, right? Because the hillock decided we want to get it to the terminal, so get it to the terminal. Don't have it weak when it gets there, just have it there. So action potentials are all the same. Uh, we already mentioned where these occur, graded potentials, cell bodies and dendrites, action potentials. The trigger zone here is what? The hillock. Trigger, do we, do we start it, right? That, where is that threshold potential? Where does the integration occur? Now we're going to see that what causes these potentials here in a minute, the only way that you can get changes in membrane potential is if ions move, right? Remember we said we had a membrane, we have sodium predominantly outside, potassium predominantly inside. The only way to change the polarity from minus 70 whatever is to move those ions. We either make the inside less negative or more negative by, by moving those two ions predominantly. The ions that are usually involved, well, with an action potential, you'll, we'll see that it's going to always be sodium and potassium. With a graded potential, the answer is it kind of depends on what type of potential it is. If it is a depolarizing potential, we're going to use predominantly sodium, but sometimes we can use calcium. If it is a hyperpolarizing potential, we're going to let chloride ions come into the cell, making it more negative, or we're going to let potassium ions come out of the cell, making it more negative. So it depends here. Um, we're going to use, I'll, let's do it this way. We're going to use sodium or calcium for a depolarizing potential, or we're going to use potassium or uh, chloride ions for hyperpolarizing. And you can see because of the concentration gradients for those ions, Sodium or calcium influx will depolarize the membrane. Potassium efflux will hyperpolarize the membrane. Chloride ion influx will hyperpolarize the membrane. I'll show you in a second. But that's what's happening there. And we mentioned already here what I just told you. They can be either depolarizing or hyperpolarizing. If it's depolarizing the threshold, it will trigger an action potential. They are always depolarized. Right? Because I told you what, they're always plus 30. They're no choice. Okay. What about the strength? Well, the strength of the graded potential, as we'll see in a minute, depends on the strength of the stimulus. And we mentioned that, right? Strong stimulus, strong graded potential. Weak stimulus, weak graded potential. Action potentials are all or none. You either get them or you don't. And if you get them, they're always the same, no matter what. The, a weak stimulus that's at threshold gives you a plus 30 millivolt action potential. An incredibly strong stimulus at threshold still gives you a plus 30 action. What's interesting about graded potentials is that they can be summed, meaning that, for example, if two weak graded potentials arrived at the axon hillock at the same time, they are additive. Each one by themselves may not trigger a response, but the two of them together might be strong enough to trigger a response. That's what we mean by summation. So graded potentials are additive. Action potentials are, you either get one or you don't. 
And we'll see that you can't get more than one at the same time. While one action potential is occurring, the cell cannot generate another one at the same spot on the membrane. I'll, I'm going to elaborate on all of this here in just a second. Uh, what initiates the signal? Um, usually it's ion flux. We know that has to be true, right? Because a graded potential is what? It's measured in volts. How do you change the volt? By changing the ion distribution across the membrane. So this is all about ion flux. That's why we spent a little bit of time talking about diffusion, simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and things like that, is because that's what's going to determine these potentials. Uh, we already talked about this. All right, so that, that's what we want to look at. All right, so let's, let's look at 